What is going on YouTube? It's your boy. Today we are going to teach you how to level fast in 5FF. I am currently on day 13. I haven't started day 14 yet because I haven't even touched my character to grind today. I'm just an AFK selling. This will be day 14. And on day 14, my main character, my main character is level 79, 58%. But wait, that's not my only character, bro. That's not my only character. I also have a level 66 FSRM that is at 53%. And typically these characters will level together. However, my main character is the blade and he is level 79. I have two characters above level 16 in less than 13 days. And I want to show you how I get it. There are people that can do this faster because they will swipe. But I'm going to show you the concepts you need in order to level fast. And I'm also going to tell you what you would need to do if you want to level faster than I did. So let's get started, fam. This is my character and we are in the first town, Fredin or Flaris. So when you start this game, you are going to start in this town. The only quest that you need to focus on that you actually need to do is Rionin quest line for your main character. Rionin quest line for your main character is going to look like when you pull up the quest menu, it's going to it's going to look like chapter 1, the emerging darkness, it's going to be a chain quest. And for percentage of experience, it should give you an actual percentage. This is chapter one on level 66. That tells you I haven't done my main quest line since level one. It's telling me to kill the wolves. I haven't done my main quest line on this character. That's why it's behind the levels. And this goes to show you the power of questing and how powerful the main quest line is in this game. I've done all of those quests on my main character. That is why he is higher level. The only thing that I didn't do were quests that didn't give me any percentage. But as I was leveling, I did all my Rionin quest line. And Rionin quest line, when you look at the map, it shows up as a red quest. There are other red quests, but the Rionin quest line is the main quest line, you guys. So like I said, do yourself a favor, do me a favor. Make sure you do the Rionin quest lines in Flaring. All right, that is the uh, first quest line. The second quests that you do that are important are yellow quests, right? Now, yellow quests are important because yellow quests give you the opportunity to kill certain mobs. And as you kill these mobs, you get quest items. And for turning in these yellow quests with the quest items, you get EXP. So two things here. These quest items can be sold for money or they can be given away to level your guild. So it's not just you giving quest items for ASP. You're, you're using items that can be used to level your guild or you're using items that can be used to make you money. So you have to gauge whether it's worth it for you to sell your quest items in a, at a private shop, which private shop is very important for leveling too, don't get me wrong. So it, you gotta determine whether it's worth it for you to sell your quest items in a private shop versus actually farm them and get the experience. How much qu uh, experience does that quest give you, right? So those are the two types of quests that you need to focus on all level, okay? So those are yellow quests and your Yonin main quest line. The only other time I will do other quests that pop up on the map, I will pick up every quest, but I'm not gonna do it. I will only do other quests on the map if it gives me above 6%, that's my golden rule, 6%. If it's a giant boss fighting quest and you're not at the level 65 plus with the gear to do boss, if you don't have friends or a guild, don't do the boss hunt, the giant hunting quest. Skip it, right? Do the easy quest. If you can get help, do it. Great. Great experience. But you got to have a guild. You got to have friends. That's going to help you progress and level and fly FF. Okay. So we've covered the two types of quests that we should be doing. Yellow quest, Rionin, main quest line, right? So now that we know what quests we should be doing, 
okay, what what's going to help us when we go to actually complete these quests? Well, knowing your stats, your stat distribution, knowing what gear you should have, making sure that you have the right accessories, whether you need stam and defense accessories or attack uh, you know, accessories, knowing whether you're a single target or AOE, which most people are going to be single target starting out, especially as a marker or vagrant, knowing your build, right? That is also very key and important to progressing and being able to level your character. Okay, so 1 to 15 is going to be done in flaring. What I recommend, I'm just going to go through the actual level by level process, and then I'm going to tell you what you should do to include in that grind to expedite it. So the regular leveling process is like I said, Rihanna and Yellow Quest. Now, when you start, you are going to be here in Flaren. You're going to be at the south. You're going to move more northern in this area, in this region, um, higher level you get. So when the second you start, you can go straight north from the town. You can go left or right. Look for A-Bats, right? You farm those A-Bats to level three. Oh, level three, level two. At, at level three, you go to Mush Pain until I level five. And then at level five, um, hopefully you get a weapon drop or something. You're going to go to Puke Pukes. Um, and then after hitting like seven on Puke Pukes, you're going to go to uh, Demians. Now, this is all assuming you don't have player buffs. This is assuming you're using the buff penguin at the beginning of the town. Now, if you're smart like me or you're a no life like me, you can have a character buff you that's high level. You. So that's the reason I started my second character. My second character was buffing my second character to second and unlock buffs. But I was also asking high level players for buffs when I would see them walk by. Those buffs of a high level player, a high level assist, will literally carry you through the game. So skip all that. If I'm level one with base weapons and I get level 60 buffs, I'm going straight to Puke Pukes at level one and I'm going to grind it to level to level five. And then if I still have buffs, I'm going straight um, to uh, the, the door, the uh, Dory not Domus, the, the seahorses, right? After seven, because I have level 60 buffs, right? So what I'm trying to get you guys to understand is the concepts of grinding with buffs or without buffs. Because from level zero, it's very important. And from a lower level, you need to limit test and you need to really tell the type of mobs and levels that you can complete. I like to call leveling in 5FF uh, overload, progressive overload. Because you want to make sure you're finding enemies that are hard, as hard as possible, but aren't too hard to where they like you're getting good experience. You got to weigh kill speed versus experience, right? But typically, the rule of thumb, if you have buffs from a character that's 20 plus levels higher than you, you need to go for a mob that's about five levels higher than you. So that's why I said, if I'm level, if I'm level uh, zero and I get uh, level 60 buffs, I'm going maybe kill mush pains for like level two, level three. And I'm going straight to peak peaks because those buffs are going to carry me, dude. Right after peak peaks, I'm right Dory Nomads. They're right next to each other. After Dory's. After I hit like level nine, level maybe level level eight, I'm going straight to little wolves because I play your buffs. You have to gauge that, right? So I wouldn't grind on this map anything longer than level um level seventeen. After level seventeen, and again, assuming you have you can get buffs in this Captain Bang area, you want to go to the Fountain of the Dead and you want to grind there until about 21, right? Then you can come to St. Morning and you're gonna continue doing your reunion quest line, your red quest line, and you're gonna continue doing yellow quests. Make sure you're saving quest items to, to determine whether you need to turn those yellow quest items in for a quest in St. Morning or Flaren or whatever, um, because there are a lot of quests that will come later and you'll still need those quest items. So be careful with selling your items. Now, level, uh, like I said, at level 21-ish, you can leave that cave, um, or let's say at level 17, you're in St. Morning. At level, if you leave uh, Flaren at 17 and you come to St. Morning, you can grind fly bats 
with buffs because they're level 21 or wag sacks um i say wag sacks are pretty decent i grinded both of these actually but if you are already like 21 from the mutant then what you're going to do is you're going to come down over here to mia's and you're going to grind mia's until um 22 and, the, and let's, let's say you hit 22 23 you can grind the pumpkins so you see, I'm always within three to five lower range of mobs. I'm telling you guys to go grind. That's where you want to aim, like target aim, three to five levels, and hopefully you get player buffs. And I'm just going to go through the same way. So let's say uh, 27 giggle box, right? Um, 30, you're going to be at the uh, the Bupros. I recommend Bupros over rocks because Bupros, uh, are easier to pull, especially the captains, and they're only 34. Um, and then after you're about 30, 32, 31, um, the first, like the first thing you should be doing around in your 30s is you're gonna have a long quest line. You're gonna have a very long quest line. Um, and that, that, the quest line of the 30s, along with grinding uh all the way until you hit mm, 36 is where you should grind uh either small hobos or dumb bulls you should be grinding small hobos dumb bulls to about 36 and then at 36 is when you can switch over uh to totemias totemias you actually need to be a little closer to uh to these guys in order to grind to get their level right so i'm going to very quickly go over garden and then uh dark on so at in garden um you're going to be level 40 when you start on tombstones this should be the first mobs you, you farm there right i recommend tombstones over scorpions and then after tombstones let's say you're 42 you can go to phantoms 42 43 after uh getting 44 you can do pranksters now keep in mind the gap between bask and pranksters is a little little high so you might be able to get 45 on bask if you don't have the best of gear but at this point at level 30 you should have bought your dream gear set right so you should have a little bit of a little bit of gear a little bit of damage you should buy your level 30 green set uh you should have it by this point you should see your farming speed increase um and you're, you're going to be a garden of rices. The last mobs here you're going to farm is really the Willems, maybe the Pranksters. Because you can go to Darkon and start farming hyenas, line, uh, lioness, um, at about 47, 48. You can really go earlier because after everything that I just told you, that is how you level yourself. Now, what's going to expedite this leveling process by this point you guys get the concept you, you have what i'm saying you can figure out your own mobs you can project your own levels if not i can make a specific guide on the exact mobs to farm for each level but that's not really what this guide is about i'm more so giving you guys general information so the next piece of general information i want to give you is based upon um how to increase experience gain like, let's make it faster, right? So as you see right now, you see I'm in a party that's level one. It has no experience bonus, has no points. I have no party skills. I have no lucky drop box. I have no global attack. I have no length attack. I have nothing because this party's level zero. And that's how most of you are grinding. And that's why you're grinding slowly. You need to always be in a party and fly FF. It's an MRPG. This is an actual MRPG that rewards you. It gives you an HP bonus for having a party active. The more players around you, the more damage you do, the more drops you get, right? So even if you have players that are AFK leeching, it is better to have, be in a party than it is to play solo in this game. It is much better to have a full party of every grinders. But even if you, like, there's a 20 level range radius in Flyf, whereas if you are 20 levels lower, 19 levels lower, I can power level you. If you are 19 levels higher, you can power level me. Understanding the differences between being power level or power leveling is what's gonna make you uh, an efficient leveler versus a standard general slow ass leveler, right? So when you go, when you're getting power level, your partner needs to be on level and your 
Party leader needs to be 19 levels above you or somewhere near that range. If you are power leveling, you can have someone 10 to 19 levels below you um, and the party needs to be on level for them. Now, if you're group grinding, then that's when you should have XP on contribution. That way anybody who's contributing to the damage can get experience. But the more people you have around you, period, the more of an HP bonus you're gonna get. However, when you when the party is on level, then obviously the lower levels are gonna get um, a bit more experience than the higher levels. And that's why it's best to put on level if you're power level. If you're, like I say, contribution for standard level. Now, that is how you're gonna speed up leveling as far as party HP. Now, outside of party XP, there are items that are premium, which you can buy these in game for gold as well. I actually have some, which I bought for 4.2 mil because I'm now at a point where I'm so rich and I'm grinding so much gold in game. I no longer have to swipe for scrolls. I can just farm in the game and I can buy premium items like for free. Like it's fucking great. So what you're going to want is a, a pet guaranteed. Everyone needs a pet. Like this is not even it's not a, it's not a debate people without pets make literally like three times less than people with pets it's it's that serious but you only need one pet you only need one and it literally lasts you forever it's like it's a ten it's a seven dollar investment dude or you can buy one in game for 15 pin like uh like 500 uh like there's certain ones that come out for uh like 15 mil but it's 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 not permanent dude um it's not permanent so I don't think 15 mils worth $7. I'd rather spend the $7. So outside of a pet, you're going to want these amplification scrolls, which there are ones specific per level. So right here, they end at 60. These are the two times. So leveling to 60 is actually faster than leveling past 60 because of these. And then you have upcuts for $3. So this is $2 in the HP scroll for an hour. That's like a coin at a fucking arcade shop. $2 to play again. For new lives type thing or three dollars for 10 up cup stones which means 10 hours um of increased defense you know what i mean like this these buffs are what's gonna greatly 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 increase your power of grinding pros of amplification for party to increase the speed in which your party levels at which they're speeding your party levels at means the more points you have means the faster your party and you gain xp like overall xp because you're getting higher party bumps. So it's it's kind of self-explanatory. All like these scroll in this buff page will help you level. And the more you spend on that, the faster you will level point by period. And once you get to the point where you're able to sustain your own cash, then you can buy them in game. Now, the things that you should do in game in order to make money while leveling, from all the items you get while leveling, the greens, the reds, the stuff that you don't need, you need to sell it in a private shop. You open up private shop, you just drag something here. Let's say this is a bigger ring. I want to sell for 100k. You set that up. You set a name, and then uh, you make sure you're not flying, and you, you set up a shop. If you want to leave town and you don't want to be the shop, you can set up a vendor. But keep in mind, you can only set up a certain amount of vendors per day. However, I recommend that you at least set up one private shop every day at night, if not when you AFK, because that's what's going to make you enough money to net yourself in order to sufficiently progress through the game. Now, we've talked about buffs, scrolls, we've talked a little bit about build, party XP, we've talked about leveling, general leveling tips of keeping mobs within a certain range. Now, the only thing that you're gonna have to do research on after this video is your class and your specific build, whether you're going single target AOE so your stat distribution is correct, Make sure your gear is right. And if you follow these tips, then you should be level 79 much quicker than 13 days. Just keep in mind, when you're playing, you power level people. When you are not playing, right, you should get power level. There are free power levelers. However, um, I recommend finding paid power levelers because it actually contributes to the fly of FP economy. Like when I'm not playing, I will pay somebody to level me. And when I'm playing, I will level lower level players. So I'm helping a higher level player by leeching and giving him money. And then I'm helping low level players by letting them leech and giving them money. It's a circle of life. 
it's not a bad thing. It's actually a great thing. If you want to active level and play yourself, great. But someone who's actually getting power level is going to level faster than you. So that'll have to be a fact that you accept. So that is pretty much all I want to say to you guys about leveling your life. Um, I'm going to push towards 100 because I'm fucking loving this game. But if you guys got any questions on my way to 100, go ahead and drop them in the comment section. And I will see you next video. Peace and love, you guys. Peace and love.